Hi, this is Jamie Davis for Innovations in Patient Care, and we're here at EMS Today 2012 for the EMS 10 Awards again this year, and I'm really excited because of just the innovators, the unsung heroes, the people that have come up with a new way to either educate, to innovate, to provide better care for our patients. And uh, I'm here with David Rhinus, an educator from Centura Health in Denver, Colorado. And uh, David, you've come up with an interesting program to find a new way to help EMS professionals visualize and understand what's going on with a STEMI patient, with a cardiac patient, and kind of draw conclusions with, between the, what's going on in the anatomy and physiology directly with what they're seeing on EKG. Can you tell us a little bit about how that program came about? Well, I've been a paramedic for 30 years, and what I tried to do is bring about a program that um, would speak to um, people who learn visually and to put a 3D model in their hand so that they could um, understand um, anatomy uh, on a real level. And so um, I was looking for a program and um, one of the um, um, providers to um, Centura Hospital was um, St. Jude's and they did a heart dissection. So I went to that um, and it was more geared towards the hospital and heart cast and things like that. But I thought what a great idea to take a 3D model and let's bring it to the paramedics and let's bring it to the paramedics on a level that they would under, understand. Um, and relate it to, to STEMI, and, but also bring, bring about what, what could go um, awry as far as mimics go, and um, use a, a model and dissection. So I surrounded myself with some really talented people from um, Lilton Hospital's cath lab, from St. Jude's um, um, Medical, they provide um, um, pacemakers and um, our own medical director is Dr. Eby and we um, found a good model which is a pig heart and brought it out to um, the paramedics and um, did a dissection and put it down to a filled level for them. And what was their initial response? I mean, so much of what we learned, at least, at least when I went through paramedic, was that it was really book learning as far as your anatomy and physiology. There wasn't a lot of hands-on. It was look at this picture of a heart, uh, memorize this diagram of blood flow and things like that. But so many people are different types of learners. They really need that hands-on and that 3D perspective to be able to rotate that heart. And, and the pig heart's a perfect analog for the human heart. It is. It's so close to the human heart um, in so many ways and um, it it initially when I brought it up wasn't accepted with full-blown enthusiasm um, as far as this is what it's going to cost to bring it out to the field and this is what we need to do and but my my management um, got behind it supported it said let's give it a try and the first class just to go in there and see regardless of the tenure of the paramedic, see their eyes light up and, and um, have them take a look and they go, I, I never knew that the tricuspid valve was translucent. It makes so much sense now when I look at the right versus the left side of the heart. Why the left side of the heart is a high pressure side because it's two or three times the thickness as the right side. So um, they, they could look at the structure and go, I can see why this would fail under hypertension situations. Mm -hmm. And you can see things like uh, words that are just words, you know, hypertrophy. Uh, what does that mean? Hypermegaly, all these words that mean different things. You can look at a heart and say, all right, I can get a sense of why this would be an uh, overexpanded section of the heart or that it's become, uh, the muscle tissue has become enlarged and, and this side of the heart is different because you've been able to actually handle it and see the differences in the two sides of this two pump system. And they also, are able to, and that's where our, our um, heart cath um, lab came in, is um, one of the ladies, um, Jennifer Brooks, was extremely talented, and they um, were able to actually bring in the same stuff that they would utilize on a, on a um, human, and we would heart cast each one of the pig hearts, and the guys would get to do that, and they, they got an understanding of, of the the vessels and what side of the heart is fed, what side of the heart's dominant, and how important it is um, 
to open up these vessels and, and to call STEMI as quickly as possible because time is tissue. What's the aftermath of this program? What have you seen or what have you heard back from your providers as they take this class and now they go out into the field and they apply the knowledge that they've gained? Well, we, we also have a very um, high-end QA program. One of last year's innovators, Ryan Mayfield, mm -hmm. um, does a lot of um, statistical analysis and he was able to show that this class has increase the um, calling of cardiac alerts in, in a positive way. You can call it, but one thing that you need to realize is that there, there are mimics out there that will mimic a cardiac alert in so many different ways. They can um, be because they're too cold from Osborne waves or they can have pericarditis from inflammation and drug use. So. This also um, is able to help the paramedics recognize those mimics, which increases the percentage of the calls being called correctly um, and those mimics being thrown out. Right, and that's so important to uh, build confidence with the cath lab and the EMS services so that they trust you when you call in and say, I've got a STEMI alert. Uh, especially if you're not transmitting data, because not all the systems are doing that. Uh, and, and so it's important for you to really become confident and, and knowledgeable in your skills and diagnosing uh, a positive STEMI of, uh, event. Oh, absolutely. Being able to call it correctly, call it quickly, all makes a tremendous difference in the outcome of the patient. When we first started um, cardiac alerts in its infancy, um, an hour, hour and a half was, you know, what, what we started with. And now we're down to 20 minutes amazing. of getting these patients in the cath lab, getting them sterilized and ready to have a catheter run up the femoral artery into their heart. From the time it being called, it's, it's an amazing time, time frame to, to look at. And that all means what sort of outcome is that patient going to have? If we are saving that much more tissue, then that patient will have that much more productive outcome in his, his life and be able to live a, a, a good, productive life rather than being a cardiac cripple. Yeah. And it's, it's so important uh, to, to just keep in, innovating like this. So I just want to thank you and congratulate you on your award uh, for the EMS 10 Innovation Award. It's, it's, it's exciting when I see people taking things that are commonplace. Uh, pig dissections are going on in colleges and places all over the country for different types of classes and programs and pulling that into a paramedic program and applying it directly to what we need to know about is just really exciting to hear about. So David, I want to congratulate you. What, what, are, you, what are your thoughts about the EMS 10 program? You know, this type of recognition of the innovators out there. What are, what are your thoughts when you think about the other people that were nominated with you and, and future nominees? Well, I'm, I'm very humbled just I, nobody gets, regardless of who you are, here on your own. Um, there should be five, six people behind me accepting this award. It was maybe my idea, my concept, but to bring this to fruition and having everybody um, be accountable for, for its success, um, I, I think it's amazing. You know, I think that it's, it's nice that I'm receiving the award, but I think other people, it needs to be recognized other people put a lot of work into this. I may be staying here getting the, the, the plaque per se, but a lot of people were, were there and put in a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, we've brought this to every department in, into our Denver metro area, and my hospital is um, a good hospital in respect to, it doesn't matter whether you're under our medical direction, we bring this out to anybody who wants the um, education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you can imagine, there's a certain amount of cost involved in buying the, the, the pig hearts and a certain amount of um, time involved in the, the doctor's time who comes out and helps with the lecture and the people who do the um, cath lab and, you know, all the way down to um, St. Jude's Medical Center, you know, I mean, a lot of people are involved in this. Well, I'm glad that you had the great idea and, and that you were able to find the support you needed to implement it and, and uh, spearheaded that, that campaign. So thank you so much and congratulations again on your award. Thank you, sir. 
and I want to thank all of you for checking out this video and looking at our EMS 10 award winners from the 2011 year. I'm here at EMS Today 2012, and again, this is Innovations in Patient Care. You can find the audio version of this podcast in iTunes. Just look up Innovations in Patient Care, and you'll find this video in many places around the web, along with the other EMS 10 award winners from this year. Thank you.